Hey everyone, last week Jar and I celebrated our wedding anniversary in Charleston, South Carolina, and we had the best time. I had asked on YouTube and on Instagram for everybody's recommendations and we got inundated with amazing activities and restaurants. We really did have a great time and I tried to share a lot of it on Instagram stories last week and I got so many messages from people saying that they were headed to Charleston shortly or before the end of the year and that they were trying to take screen captures so that they could be reminded of places they wanted to go. So I thought it might be helpful if I do a roundup. So the best of the best of our Charleston recommendations. I have three categories. It's going to be activities, restaurants, and shopping. So I hope this is going to be helpful. I've tried to situate myself to the side of the screen a little bit so I can insert some pictures. I also brought my vlogging camera so hopefully I'll have some footage that might be interesting and I'll insert that as well. I think that's everything I have to say for an intro and if you were a person who recommended a place to us, Thank you, it really helped make the whole week that much better. So let's go ahead and get started. First up is activities and the best activity because it's one of the things that Charleston is known for, it's also free, is just to walk around and admire the buildings and the homes. We stayed in the Hilton Embassy Suites, which is kind of right in the center of everything. So I tried to walk as much as possible and not even the main streets, but the little tucked away corners and neighborhoods. There are so many little hidden gems and I feel like it's just kind of overwhelmingly pretty and especially if you like to take pictures you could really just stand in one spot and turn in a circle and every single view is breathtaking so you have to walk down to rainbow row so cool to see all the different color homes and then the battery went to the battery a few times the night that i took my camera was actually pretty stormy but still just to stand in front of these stately old homes and to see so many of them are just meticulously cared for and they have gardens in the front and just to see all the architecture and details Probably my favorite activity. Lots of people recommended going to a plantation, so I looked them all up and we ended up going to the Magnolia Plantation and Gardens. And I wanna say it was $20 a person. I'm gonna try to put links to all these places down below in case you wanna double check. I think it was worth it. It was so much fun. We really took our time. I think we spent about two hours there. It was hot. It was very hot that day. And even in the midst of summer, I thought it was still gorgeous. I can't imagine what the gardens would look like in spring. That would be something I'd love to go back and see again. The only downside was that there were these huge brown spiders everywhere. And I just I don't even know what kind of spiders they were. I don't want to know. I don't even want to. I've tried not to kind of block that part of the day out of my mind, but if you're really averse to spiders, that might be a deterrent. But even after all the gardens, they have this little wildlife preserve where I think I read that it's animals who've been injured or are sick in the wild, they kind of come in and help them rehabilitate them and let them free again. So it was also fun just playing with all the animals. Another perk of being in Charleston, of course, is being so close to the beaches. Last year when we went, we did Kiowa Island for our beach days. And that, at least where we were, was very secluded. We were one of the very few people on the beach. So you might like that. This year to change things up, we went to Folly Beach. And I'm not the biggest beach person. I'm always concerned about burning, so I don't know, beaches and me just don't get along. I really loved Folly Beach. It was very easy to rent an umbrella and chairs, and there was so many people on the beach. I love people watching it, and so I didn't get bored all day long. People watched, and I read. I We brought some snacks and some drinks. Jer loved being in the water. I really, really enjoyed Folly Beach. It's a little bit, I mean, it is more crowded, and there was like, I don't know, kind of more of that beach town feel to it, but I thought it was really fun. We did get rained out of a couple activities. We had set aside a couple hours to tour Fort Sumter and it just poured the rain. So that got scrapped real quickly. And then we wanted to go and see the Angel Oak again. We saw it last year and it, it's just really a sight to behold. Very cool, but it did rain that afternoon too. Honestly, it's not the biggest, not the biggest deal. We had walked so much and seen so much already. It was kind of nice just to relax a little bit, but I thought I'd share a couple activities you could do if it rains uh, on an afternoon or an evening. First is a workshop at Candlefish. I had gone there, it's a candle store, and I had gone last year and bought a candle that smells like Charleston in the spring, and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to go again, and I saw on their website that they had workshops, and one of them was a candle making workshop. So I went one evening, I think it was like at six in the evening, just had the greatest time. Everyone was so, so nice. So I ended up, I think, choosing number 47, which to me smells like a slightly more unisex version of Jer's deodorant, which is good. I really like how his deodorant smells. Probably one of my favorite recommendations from somebody on Instagram was a place called Milk Bar, and it's M-Y-L-K, I believe, but it's a natural nail salon, and they even sell Leilani skincare, which you know is just my favorite, and I love Leah, so it was so cool to see her represented in Charleston, and I just had the best time. So if you want to pamper yourself a little bit, highly recommend. I think that 
was in Mount Pleasant, if I remember correctly, but again, I'll put all links down below. Okay, now for the serious business restaurants. Actually, on the drive home, me and Jer went through and we ranked all the different restaurants. Honest and truthfully, that's mostly what we did last week was just eat. We ate really well. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start at breakfast and let me get up my list really quick. Okay, if you want a true down home Southern breakfast, 60 Bull Cafe was so good. It's very unassuming, but when you go in, everybody greets you and is really friendly. Jer had sweet potato biscuits and fried chicken and I think I had my best grits. There were a couple contenders, but I think my favorite grits from the week were from 60 Bull Cafe, although it was very heavy. Like it kind of felt like you almost needed a nap after you ate there. So if you want something on the healthier side, I tried a few of the juice and smoothie places in Charleston. And my favorite was a place called Beach. And it's right on King Street where all the main shopping is. And it reminds me of South Block here. The decor on the inside was really cool. And I liked their smoothie bowls. I think my favorite was the Bab smoothie or B-A-B -B smoothie bowl. They also had great juices and they sell a kombucha called One Love Kombucha. And I bought a couple bottles of that and that was kind of my kombucha for the week. Lunches were probably my favorite. You spend the whole morning walking around exploring it. By the time lunch rolls around, you just want a place to relax and some really good food. So for our number one favorite lunch place, Jerry and I were in agreement and it is the obstinate daughter and that one I think was on a beach maybe Sullivan's Island I can't remember off the top of my head but again I'll put a link down below we ordered a pizza and a pasta dish shared both they were both incredible and then for our second place lunches we had differing opinions Jer loved hominy grill I liked it too but I'll tell you my favorite in just a second but Jer loved hominy grill lots of people had warned me that it was going to be really crowded it was crowded but I felt like once we put our name in we only had to wait like 10 minutes I felt like it went really quickly the tables are kind of crunched in there so you feel like you get to know the person sitting next to you but that one we really enjoyed and then my second favorite lunch place was crew cafe i had gone there last year and really enjoyed it they do a general so's chicken which kind of seems like maybe not the most southern thing ever but it's really good and i also think that crew cafe has the best sweet tea in charleston i love going out to dinner on vacation i just there's something about going and spending the entire day at the beach getting all salty and sandy and then coming back to the room and then showering feeling all clean and fresh and then going out to a nice meal so we did two nice meals for the week the first one is i hope i don't i'm not going to pronounce this right indigo I think on their website it was said it was Italian for indigo. So it was an Italian restaurant. Oh my word. I had jumbo lump crab gnocchi. Even Jarrett, which he liked his meal, but he was like, you definitely won the battle of the meals and he ended up eating a lot of mine. It was so good. So we did that meal was kind of earlier in the week and then our anniversary meal. I had asked again for recommendations and there was two that came up a lot, Husk and Halls. So I called husk and they were like yeah we're looking at reservations for the second week of september so i said well that won't work for me but thanks i'll have to remember to make a reservation much earlier when we go back the next time so i ended up getting a reservation at halls i couldn't get it on our actual day of our anniversary so i had to get one later in the week Jared says it's the best meal of his entire life. It is a steakhouse. Jared is a steak and potato boy, and he thought it was incredible. Even one of the members of the family, Mr. Hall, came and greeted us and asked us if there was a special occasion. And when he found out it was our anniversary, just treated us like we were his own kids. Just really incredibly nice. So Jared loved that. I love the Italian place. I don't think you could go wrong with either. Okay, last thing in the food category, coffee shops. I could do an entire video on all the coffee shops I tried. If you recommended one to me, I think I went to it. I tried to go to as many as I possibly could that week, and there were three standouts. The first, I mentioned that we were staying at the Hilton Embassy Suite. So just within like a block of our hotel was a place called Kudu, K-U-D-U. I love when you walk in and people can clearly tell that you're from out of town and they ask if they can give you a recommendation and the barista recommended the honey lavender ice latte. It was so good and I kind of lost track of how many of those I had during <laughs> during the week. And then one morning, uh, Jer was sleeping in so I just decided to go exploring myself and I walked all the way down King Street and I think on Wentworth, so kind of where the candlefish shop was, if you went up a little bit further, was a place called the Rise rise bar the rise coffee bar i think it is the most instagrammable coffee shop i've ever been to in my entire life and the barista there actually was born or grew up in fairfax which is just a small world and there i had the rosemary rise latte which normally i wouldn't be too drawn to a rosemary latte but she recommended it 
absolutely loved it. I just thought the whole vibe in there, I think it's at the bottom of like a fancy hotel, if I could kind of understand how things were laid out. Definitely worth the walk over there. I really enjoyed it. And then my third favorite coffee shop, which honestly probably would have been my first, first favorite, but I couldn't walk to it. It was kind of far away, is a place called The Harbinger. Just so cute. I'm just, if you can tell there's a theme. I really like when places are cute and have really good coffee. And at The Harbinger, I had both the maple iced latte and the honey iced latte. Both were really good and I actually saw quite a few people order food. I never ordered food there, but the food looked great. But they also had a grab and go snack bar. So I got the sweet potato hummus one time. They had these little kind of energy balls, really cute. So if you are in the area, I think both any of those three coffee shops are absolutely incredible. I think number fourth is Black Tap and then pretty much everything else was just under those. But really my three favorites were the Rise Bar, Kudu and Harbinger. I'm gonna end my Charleston recommendation video with a few shops now. If you go down King Street, there's pretty much everything you could possibly imagine. There's a loft and a Madewell, a Lush, a Pottery Barn, all things like that. So it's really fun if you just wanna take a day to shop. But I'm gonna highlight a couple locally owned shops. The first one and one of the top things to do on my list of places to visit is a place called Wildcraft. It's a natural beauty store and the owner was there. Her name is Holly and she was just a gem. I really enjoyed talking to her. She is a fellow redhead and she answered all of my questions and she carried brands like Gressa, Leilani, Hint, Axiology, can't even remember. I think she also had some Josh Rosebrook too and lots of self tanning. I mean, the place was just, it just felt really warm and inviting when you walked in and she let me play with all the makeup I wanted to swatch it all and she just sanitized it afterward. Really, I think I spent like 45 minutes in there, which was might have been a little excessive. I got my first ever Hint lipstick, which I've been really liking. And I also got the Maya Chia highlight of the day so just a liquid highlight and i didn't realize that maya chia was locally owned it's owned and created in charleston which was really cool so if you're into green natural beauty i definitely think that wildcraft is a place to make sure you stop at i already mentioned candlefish but even if you don't want to take a workshop the store there is incredible and definitely worth stopping into they sell their own brand of course but lots of different candles so i think candles make if you're trying to bring a gift back to somebody or if you want a souvenir the charleston candle it really does smell very good the one thing i knew i wanted for a souvenir when I would walk to get coffee in the morning or to go to beach I saw all these women jogging or coming back from yoga classes and they had Charleston baseball caps I thought it was so cute so for like three days I admired them and then I finally stopped somebody and asked people are so nice down there so she gave me directions and told me exactly where the store was it's a store called shop so it's a little bit difficult like your phone doesn't know how to give you walking directions because it's kind of a broad name but it's in the French Quarter and it's a very small store but they sell these Charleston baseball caps and they had a few different colors I really liked the light gray and they say that these are so hard to keep in stock I actually got the last one in the store and I think they were getting another shipment in September but I just thought this was a really good little souvenir another one of my favorite shops was a stationery store called Mac and Murphy a small store but so well done it was just bright and cheerful on the inside just full of beautiful paper goods I posted a picture of it on Instagram but I did a little shopping I got a gingham journal I love this print. I also got a couple notepads, but I think it was really fun. And when I was checking out, the owner gave me a little map of different stores in that area. So if you're a guy and you like shopping, there was kind of a cool looking men's boutique. There was also a flower gallery and a cupcake place just down the road. So if you want to support some local businesses, that might be a good area to check out. My other souvenir came from a shop right on King Street called Skinny Dip. And the first level is a boutique. And then if you walk up the stairs, there's a coffee and wine bar whole place is really well done just very chic and I just enjoyed walking around and looking at all their different merchandise and I came across these prints window boxes are a thing in Charleston you can tell that people really take time and take pride in putting beautiful flowers in their window boxes and upkeeping them so they had some prints from a Charleston artist and a portion of the proceeds went to one of the homeless shelters in Charleston so I bought one I cannot wait to frame it and hang it up and just be reminded of the trip so those are my Charleston South Carolina recommendations and honestly I think we only got to like a third of every Every place that you guys told us about so just an excuse to go back but I really hope this video was helpful if you're planning a trip to Charleston let me know and if you've been before and you have some places that you really love that I didn't mention leave them in the comments down below maybe they'll help somebody getting ready to plan a trip but thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it and I'll talk to you again very soon